Hello, dear students. In the prescribed textbook for the third semester, Common English, discussing diversities, readings on democracy and secularism, there is a poem titled "The Rich Will Make Temples for Shiva." This is the English translation of a poem originally written in Kannada language by Basavanna in the 12th century. The poem belongs to the Vajana tradition. As for the poet, Basavanna was a statesman, philosopher, poet and Lingayat saint belonging to the Shiva-focused Bhakti movement in India. He was born in Vijayapura district in Karnataka in the year 1105. Basavanna lived during the reign of the Chalukya dynasty and the Kalajuri dynasty. Basavanna spread social awareness through his poetry, popularly known as Vajanas. Basavanna rejected gender discrimination, social discrimination, superstitions and rituals. He died at a place called Kodala Sangama in Karnataka in the year 1167 AD. The English translation of the poem is given below. The rich will make temples for Shiva. What shall I, a poor man, do? My legs are pillar, the body, the shrine, the head, a cupola of gold. Listen, O Lord of the meeting rivers, things standing shall fall, but the moving ever shall stay. The well-known poet, scholar and translator, A.K. Ramanujan translated the poem into English. As we know, Basavanna belongs to the group of the most important and influential social and religious reformers associated with the Veera Shaiva movement. He envisaged an egalitarian social order devoid of divisive formations like caste, class and the tyranny of outdated traditions. As noted by A.K. Ramanujan, the Veera Shaiva movement was a social upheaval by and for the poor. The poem represents the whole extraordinary body of religious and spiritual lyrics called the Vajanas. It dramatizes the opposition to the institutionalization of devotion. As the poem reveals, the poet foregrounds the human body over the institutionalized form, temple. The temple only carries out in brick and stone the primordial blueprint of the human body. Here, the poet focuses on the original blueprint of all temples, that is, the human body. I hope you have read the text of the poem many times and also comments related to the poetic and spiritual traditions in relation to the poet and the poem, The Rich Will Make Temples for Shiva. As we can see, there are just three short stanzas and the surface meaning is crystal clear. The poet asks this existential question related to his position, worldview and the usual practice seen around him among the rich people. The rich and the privileged people usually make temples for Shiva in order to show off their wealth and also as a testimony of their religious faith. But what shall the poet do now that he is a poor man in pursuit of the divine for which the classical and all too familiar sound Shiva is used by Basavanna? The poet articulates his spiritual awareness and method of merging with the divine. With the conviction and the straight perception of a genuine seeker, the poet says and thus reveals his spiritual strategy for self-realization. He views his legs in terms of pillar, the body as the shrine, and the head a cupola or dome of gold. In other words, the rich people construct elaborate structures using brick, granite, and even precious metals like gold as part of their pursuit of God. Then, the poet views his body as the abode of the Most High. This divine perception is based on his theoretical awareness and experiential knowledge of God. 
A temple is modeled on the primordial structure of human body as a blueprint and its spatial and temporal realities are translated into the structure of a temple which is constructed using brick and stone. The inner sanctum sanctorum is reserved for an idol made of precious metals, often gold itself. But being a seeker of the straight path leading to the divine, Basavanna can view his body as the temple and the highest divine experience is open for him in his mind and soul. He doesn't need material gold. Godly experience is something his own for which no material gold is needed even as a symbol, let alone as an idol. In his head, he feels the divine dimensions and levels as experiential reality. Hen he says, the head a cupola of gold. In the third and last stanza of the poem, the poet addresses the divine as Kodala Sangamadeva. This is the word used by the poet in the original poem. The sound is a reference to Shiva. The poet addresses the lord of the meeting rivers and expresses his conviction. The things standing shall fall, whereas the moving things shall stay. In other words, the expression standing points to practices and rituals that are followed monotonously without understanding the true essence and genuine aim of doing it. The one who moves undergoes continuous self-renewal and it can live on forever. The body and its attributes eventually decay and fall. The innate spirit or soul lives on, that is, transcending all limitations imposed by the world. The rich people make temples for Shiva, whereas true spiritual seekers like Basavanna imbibe the spirit of the divine. The perceptive readers can clearly see the world view of the poet. There is the distinction between making and being. The rich people can only make temples and follow rituals without understanding its true aim. The poet prefers the other way, being the ideal, being and becoming the ideal and the divine and merge into the highest experience of spiritual ecstasy something similar to God intoxication, then the head a cupola of gold. A poem points to several possibilities of meaning simultaneously. At one level, the moving signifies the body and spirit that realized God and truth as synonymous. A temple made of bricks and metals, granite and gold stands and it is static. A temple is bound to rituals and often perpetuates mere tradition without real comprehension. But a person who has got the vision of the divine lives on forever. Such a person attains immortality of the spirit. Thank you.